and Faraday was duly elected. But uh, I think one has to see it as a sort of son breaking away from a father, and they never really made it up. Davy died a few years later. He would never see Faraday's greatest achievements. Faraday knew there was still much to understand about electromagnetism. The wire and the compass needle have shown that electricity produces magnetism. But Faraday and others wanted to see if the opposite were true. Could magnetism produce electricity? This became the holy grail of physics. Immortality beckoned for anyone who could create an electric current, not from a battery, but from a magnet. But every scientist in Europe was stumped by this problem. They held a magnet near a wire, but nothing happened. They held lots of magnets near a wire, but still nothing happened. They replaced permanent magnets with much stronger electromagnets, but there was still no sign of electricity. For 10 years, scientists pursued the theory that if they made the magnetism strong enough, they would get electricity. The theory was wrong, but none of them would abandon it. But not Faraday. He had never adhered to theories. He just observed God's laws, and 23 days before he was 40, all was revealed. August the 29th, 1831, experiments on the production of electricity from magnetism, etc., etc., have had an iron ring made round seven eighths of an inch thick and ring six inches in external diameter, wound many coils of copper wire round one half, the coils being separated by twine and calico. We'll call this side of the ring A, this side call B. So far Faraday had done nothing new. Coil A was an electromagnet. Coil B was just a long wire. Faraday hoped the iron ring would somehow concentrate the magnetism coming from coil A into coil B. Charged a battery of ten pair of plates four inches square, made the coil on B side one coil and connected its extremities by a copper wire to a magnetic needle, in my case this meter. And now finally the mystery of how to get electricity from magnetism was about to be solved. Then connected the ends of one of the pieces on side A with a battery, with battery Immediately, a sensible effect on needle. It oscillated and settled at last in original position. On breaking connection of side A with battery again, a disturbance of the needle. So the magnetism did create electricity, but only at the instant it appeared and at the instant it disappeared. But I admit I was still mystified. Bryson, I've, I've done it, right. yeah, but uh, what actually have I done? What's the significance of... Right, well, I, mean, I think the problem that we've got with this is that Faraday had to build everything in to such a tight, small space to see any effect with the sort of instruments he had. This is a modern version of Faraday's experiment. On the left is the electromagnet connected to a battery. On the right is a coil connected to a meter. What was really important about what Faraday had seen was that it was the changing magnetic field that was producing a current in the second coil. I mean, mm. we can change that by turning the current on and off, mm. or we could use, and Faraday went on to show, that you can use a permanent magnet. If I take this coil away, yeah. and you just move that magnet near to the coil, the changing magnetic field is making the current flow around the coil, and that's what the meter's measuring. The meter's measuring... The meter is measuring the current that flows here. What's mm. making the current flow 
is the changing magnetic field. Right, so from this magnet, I am producing electricity. You are, your battery it's, power yeah. station. That is how we generate mm. power in most of the big power stations mm. today. We so Faraday had done it. He'd got electricity from magnetism when all the others had failed, blinded by their preconceived ideas. That was Faraday's genius, to tackle nature's mysteries with an open mind. Within a few years of Faraday's discovery, the first telegraph lines were laid. And since then, there's been a never-ending stream of technological wonders that harness electricity. The blacksmith's son had changed the world forever. By the 1840s, the young man who had sat at the back of the theatre during Sir Humphrey Davies' lectures was now more famous than his mentor. Audiences now flock to see his lectures, and like Davy before him, women swooned before his enormous intellect. Mind you, they drank a lot more port in those days. Here's what one reviewer said. It was an irresistible eloquence which compelled attention and insisted upon sympathy. There was a gleam in his eyes which no painter could copy and which no poet could describe. Their radiance seemed to send a strange light into the very heart of his congregation. His enthusiasm sometimes carried him to the point of ecstasy when he expiated on the beauties of nature and when he lifted the veil from her deep mysteries. The chemical history of a candle. By his 40s, Michael Faraday had achieved his boyhood dream of becoming a great man of science. He remained true to the lofty principles that had motivated him from the start. He'd gone into science to know the mind of God, not to make money. He never patented anything. Michael Faraday died in 1867, aged 76. I thought I would end my journey where it began at his birthplace near the Elephant and Castle. I'd heard there was a memorial to him somewhere here. I imagined it would be grand, something befitting a man who was born in poverty and still rose to be one of England's greatest sons. Yes, I imagined the memorial would be very grand indeed. Oh.